The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Bigger Des Pongemu, your physics teacher. Last class, you were given an assignment. Question one. The mass of an empty measuring cylinder is 3 grams and the mass of the measuring cylinder containing water is 46 grams as measured on a spring balance. A. What is the mass of the water? If the volume of the water in the measuring cylinder is 43 centimeters cube, B. Calculate the density of the water. What is the mass of the water? If the volume of the water in the cylinder is 43 cm cube, B. Calculate the density of the water. The mass of the measuring cylinder containing water is 46 grams and the mass of the empty measuring cylinder is 3 grams. For us to obtain the mass of water only, we need to subtract the mass of the empty measuring cylinder from the mass of the measuring cylinder containing water. The difference gives us the mass of the water only. Therefore, the mass of the water is 46 grams minus 3 grams which gives us 43 grams. The volume of the water is given to be 43 cm cube, and we have successfully measured the mass of the water only accurately, and we have obtained the mass of the water only to be 43 grams. For us to be able to calculate or determine the density of a substance, we need two physical quantities, mass and volume. Once we have measured the mass and we have also measured the volume, we calculate density by taking mass divided by volume. And the mass of water calculated is 43 grams and the volume given is 43 cm cube. Therefore, the density of water will be 43 grams divided by 43 cm cube. 43 cancels with 43 one, one time and the answer gives us 1 gram per cm cube. So the density of the water given is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. <laughs> We are moving on to our next lesson, which is on density and floating object. We use density to explain why some objects will float and why others will sink. The plan of the lesson is as follows. Objectives. Prerequisite. Real life situation. Activity, application exercises, 
and of course assignment by the end of the lesson learners should be able to explain why objects float and uh, to state some uses of density so learners should be able to explain why some objects will float and some will sink and also state some examples some uses of density what you are supposed to know before you understand the lesson for today are uh, the definition of density and uh, the SI unit and other units of density. So learners, should be, learners are expected to be able to define density. State the SI unit and other units of density. Let's find out if our learners can take on this lesson. Define density. Two. State the SI unit and the other units of density. Density is a mass per unit volume of a substance. Density is a mass per unit volume of a substance. And as earlier mentioned, we defined mass as the amount of material contained in a substance and we defined volume as the amount of space occupied by a substance. Today, we are defining density again as the mass per unit volume of a substance. It means the amount of material contained in a given volume of a substance. And we said a substance which is dense or more dense is a substance that has more material packed in a smaller space or a substance that has more material packed in a small volume. So if the volume is small, the substance is more dense, provided the mass stays the same. If the volume is large, the substance is less dense, provided mass stays the same. So if the mass of an object, if the material contained in an object stays constant and its volume increases, what happens is the substance becomes less dense because there is an inverse relationship that exists between density and volume. And clearly, from the formula, you can see the inverse relationship that exists between density and volume. On the left-hand side, we have density, which is up. And on the right-hand side, we have mass divided by volume. Volume is down, telling us that by the time volume decreases, Density increases if mass stays the same. And if volume increases when mass is staying the same, density is going to reduce. The SI unit of density is a kilogram per cubic meter, which is abbreviated kg or with lowercase letters, slash, as the division slash, the division sign, meters to the power 3, the kilograms per cubic meter. Other units of density include the grams per cm cube, the grams per milliliter, and the grams per cubic decimeter. The grams per cubic centimeter, the grams per milliliter, and the grams per cubic decimeter. Real life situation. In the picture below, it is seen that some household items, when placed in water, remain at the top, while others are found at the bottom. Why is it that some of the substances remain at the top of the water while others go to the bottom? You are expected to explain why some household items or substances 
we stay on top and while others we go to the bottom when placed in water. The items that remain on top of water are set to float on water. Meanwhile, the items that are at the bottom are set to sink in water. And the reason some of these items float is because they are less dense than water. So if you place an item or a substance in water which is less dense than water, that item is going to float, it's going to stay on top. And if you place an item which is denser than water, the item sinks, it goes to the bottom. So we can use this idea to determine which substance is denser or less dense than water. If you place a given item in water and the item floats, you can therefore conclude that the item is less dense than water. And if you place an item in water and it sinks, it gets to the bottom, the conclusion will be that the item or the substance is denser than water. So items that are denser than water will sink. Meanwhile, those that are less dense will float on water. Activity. Take two identical cups labeled A and B and put water in them to about 80% full as shown below. You have two glasses of water. They are having the same volume of water A and B. So the two glasses are identical. They are containing the same or approximately the same amount or volume of water. Put three spoons of salt in the water in cup B. So you are adding salt, three spoons of salt into the water in B. At this point, B is having salty water, meanwhile, A is still having pure water. Take an egg and put into the water in A and observe what happens. Take an egg and put into the water in cup A and observe what happens. Remove the egg from cup A and put it into the water in cup B and observe what happened. Explain your observations. Explain the observation when the egg was placed in cup A, which is containing pure water, and when the egg was placed in cup B, containing salty water or sea water. Compare the density of water in cup A and the density of the salty water in cup B. Now, dropping the egg in the water in cup A will cause the egg to sink. The egg gets to the bottom. The egg sinks to the bottom of the water in cup A. And as earlier mentioned, any object that sinks in water is denser than water. So in the first case, the egg is denser than the pure water in cup A. Dropping the egg in cup B causes the egg to stay on top. The egg floats on the water in cup B as shown below. Remember, it's the same egg that was dropped in cup A. That is now being dropped in cup B. And this time around, the egg floats in the water in cup B. The difference is as a result of the difference in the water placed in both cups. 
A is containing pure water. Meanwhile, B is containing salty water or sea water. The egg sinks in A, telling us that the egg is denser than pure water and floats in B, telling us that the egg is less dense than salty water. The egg sinks in the water in cup A because the egg density is greater than the density of the water in A. But the egg floats in B because the density of the egg is greater than that of the density of water in B. So we can therefore compare the density of the pure water in cup A to the density of the pure of the salty water in cup B. Since the egg sinks in the water in cup A, the egg is denser than the water in cup A. In other words, pure water is less dense than the egg. In, in cup B, the egg floats on seawater, telling us that the egg is less dense than sea water. In other words, sea water is denser than the egg. Sea water is denser than the egg, but the egg is denser than pure water. Therefore, sea water is denser than pure water. The density of salty water in cup B is therefore greater than the density of fresh water in cup A. Activity. You are provided with cubes of ice and a glass of water as shown below. You have ice cubes and a glass of water. You have ice and a glass of water. Put the cubes of ice into the glass of water and observe what happens. By the time you put the ice cubes into the glass of water, you realize that the ice stays on top. The ice cubes will float. This is because the density of ice is less than that of water. Ice is less dense than water. That is why ice will always float on water. Ice is water in solid form and should have the same density as water. But why does ice float? on water. The volume, as Ella mentioned, there is an inverse relationship that exists between density and volume, provided we are keeping mass constant, provided the mass is not changing, provided the amount of material containing in the substance is not changing. If we have an increase in volume, the density is bound to go down. For example, whenever a substance expands, Whenever a substance expands, we have an increase in volume because volume is increasing and the amount of material in that substance is staying the same, density drops. The volume of a given mass of ice is greater than the volume of the same mass of water. So a given mass of ice occupies a greater space than that same mass of water. This gives ice a smaller density compared to that of water. So ice is less dense because a given mass of ice occupies a larger volume than the same mass of water.
some units of density. Ship can float because they have tanks that hold air and makes the average density of the ship lower than that of the water. If you take an ordinary piece of iron and you drop it in water, the iron is going to sink because iron is denser. Because iron is denser than water. Iron is denser than sea water. A ship has iron. A ship is made of iron. But it floats on water because the ship has tanks that hold water and makes the average density of the ship lower than that of the water. So in total, the average density of the ship is less than the density of water. Even though the ship is made up of substances which are individually denser than water, but the average density of the ship is less than that of water. This causes the ship to float. The average density of the ship is less than that of water because the ship is also made of substances or items which are far more less than water. And an example of some of the items that are far more less than water is dry wood and air. And air. By the time we combine the density of all the items, all the substances that were used in making the ship, we are going to have an average density which will be less than the density of water causing the ship to float on water. Another use of density again is oil spills on water are harmful to the environment but the ability for oil to float eases cleanup. Oil floats on water because oil is less dense. It floats on water. Whenever we have an oil spill on water, we can easily clean the oil because the oil floats on water and this eases cleaning. Density is also applied in the preparation of palm oil, in the separation of the oil from water. Since the oil is less dense, it floats on water. It floats on water and can be easily separated from water which is denser and found below. Ships can float because they have tanks that hold air and makes the average density of the ship lower than that of water that was mentioned already. And oil spills on water are harmful to the environment but the ability for oil to float eases cleaning. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, you were asked to explain why some objects float and why others we sink. For us to be able to explain why objects we float and others we sink, we need to bring in the concept of density. We are comparing the densities of two substances and density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. An object floats in a fluid when the density of the object is less than the density of the fluid. But an object sinks in a fluid when the density of the object is more than that of the fluid. You are provided with some oil in a bottle and some water in a glass as shown below. So you have oil in a bottle and water in a glass. Pour some oil into the glass containing the water. Pour some oil into the glass containing the water and observe what happens. It is observed that the oil remains at the top while the water remains at the bottom. 
the oil floats on water. Why will oil float on water? Why will the oil float on water? Oil floats on water because it has a lower density than that of water and the two liquids are immiscible. You cannot mix the two liquids. So oil will definitely float on water since oil is less dense and water is denser than oil. Exercise. Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follows. You have cork with an average density of 0.26 grams per cm cube floating. You have wood with an average density of 0.5 grams per cm cube floating. You have wax with an average density of 0.8 grams per cm cube floating. And you have ice with an average density of 0.9 grams per cm cube also floating. And at the bottom, you have steel with an average density of 8 grams per cm cube, which is at the bottom, this steel sinks in water. You also have lead, which is having an average density of 11 grams per cm cube at the bottom. So steel and lead sink. Meanwhile, ice wax, wood, and cork float. Name the objects that float in water. Name the objects that sink when placed in water. The objects that float are cork, wood, wax, and ice. Those that sink are steel and lead. Assignment. From the figure above containing cork, wood, wax, ice, steel, and lead. Name the object with the lowest density. Name the object with the lowest density. That's question one. Question two. Name the object with the highest density. You have been given cork, wood, wax, ice, steel, and lead. Question one. Name the object with the lowest density. Question two, name the object with the highest density. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on speed. Manetambia niña ne injo biayen